Beauty, Sigh, by Temi Rose. Place, a beauty pageant. Time, today. Act one, we open in Venice. Angela Baker, the artistic director of the beauty pageant, is dressed in a ball gown, walking and posing as if she were a contestant in a pageant. I remember when life was vivid, when a dozen roses stank up a three-room apartment, living room, bedroom, kitchen, why doesn't the bathroom count as a room? The bathroom floor was covered with black and white checkered tiles that spilled halfway up the wall and I was ripped. We were fooling around and I said to him, just a sec. This is a story about my first diaphragm. It came with a clear plastic stick with notches in it. The diaphragm itself looked like a little mini rubber spaceship from War of the Worlds. You were supposed to hook a semi-rigid edge of the spaceship onto the top notch on the tip of the stick, stretch it tight like an arrow, hooking the opposite edge onto another notch, this the one on the shaft. Hindenburg, queen of the skies, seen here from a universal newsreel camera plane as it sped over New York to its tragic end at Lakehurst, New Jersey, now lies at the Naval Air Station a twisted mass of metal. Shortly after these pictures were taken, showing the great Skyliner saluting the millions watching it from below on its first trip of the season. Then you were supposed to roll it over and turn it upside down and slide it into your vagina. The huge craft exploded while docking and blazed to a fiery end, taking the lives of almost half its 99 passengers and crew. Once inside, the diaphragm was supposed to pop effortlessly off the stick onto your cervix, an invincible barrier to sperm. They have you practice this in the gynecologist's office, which is sort of weird, squatting, stretching, flipping, popping in front of a nurse. But I wasn't ripped, and the floors and walls were solid, beige, green, yellow, ignominious, unremarkably bland, easy, sort of, compared to black and white checkered tiles. Squatting so I could slide the stick inside my vagina, rotate it, and pop the diaphragm into place the way I was taught. Hours late on its trip from Hamburg because of headwinds, the Zeppelin had to ride out a thunderstorm along the Jersey coast before heading for the air station and nosing its way to the mooring mast. But the edges were greased up with the requisite sperm-killing goo I was told it was necessary to spread thickly on the inside of the spaceship and liberally around its edges so no renegade spermies would breach the rubber spaceship barrier. Slowly the big ship warps in and the ground crews rush for the mooring lines. In another ten minutes or so the great aircraft would have been snugly docked. And every time I'd get the diaphragm loaded on the stick, these greased up edges that were supposed to hold the diaphragm on the stick wouldn't, couldn't, didn't. The diaphragm shot off the stick, bounced off the walls, spreading sperm-killing goo, randomly landing onto black and white squares dancing. But as the passengers crowded the windows to watch, a roar and a burst of flame near the big tail fins turned the ship into a flaming inferno. I couldn't stop laughing. Three times I had to retrieve the bouncing rubber spaceship, wipe goo off the walls, and goo is hard to spot on black and white tiles. I wash the diaphragm, dry it, put more goo on it, stretch it onto the notch stick, turn it over, and compound. bedroom going, what are you doing? He was crabby. Kawaitis got interrupt us before it got begun us. I'm laughing so hard trying to get my new plastic slingshot and slimy spaceship to protect me from something I didn't even know I couldn't have. Lights change. Angela is robed, crowned, carrying roses, the winner. Walking after midnight in the soul light, magic blunts up against the man as we know him to be, or not to be, mostly not being, mostly not. But why not? That's what's interesting, why? 
I loved being chased, then falling and receiving whatever he was bringing, communicating in his thrusting or his teasing and the eruption of feeling and liquid warm or hot, his waste, my treasure. How could two creatures be so far apart, making completely different meanings from one ecstatic act? I didn't feel inferior, I felt invisible. The beauty pageant stage is revealed. Grace O'Malley, the stage manager for the beauty pageant, is on stage holding a clipboard. She wears a headset and minds running light cues. Lights change. I have a tornado in my soul. How my life began, that's how I began. I was born as a tornado was passing through town. You become what happens to you. We become what happens to us and a house dropped on me, but the world didn't magically change to color. Not till much later. But there were birds. <laughs> There's always birds. Ellen Sussman, the business manager for the beauty pageant, enters from the outside in a raincoat. She carries a soft briefcase and an umbrella. I hate myself, but I can't get away from myself, so I better work something out with myself. Grace Mimes asking Ellen for a raise and better equipment. A good game should never come out the same way twice, otherwise, why keep playing it? If you already know how it'll turn out, it's not a game, it's a play. But that's the nouns. The verbs are the opposite. To play is to be free of predetermined ends. To game is to know the outcome. Because it's a trick, the outcome is fixed. Like a play noun, where there's a script, is the opposite from playing the verb, where imagination trumps trickery. Not anymore. To play with someone today means exactly the same thing as to game them. Trick them. Maggie Vygotsky, one of the theater ushers, speaks from somewhere in the audience. Where does food come from? 